At Direct Service Garage Doors, we are your one-stop shop for all things garage door. From garage door repair and broken spring replacement to new garage doors and openers, we do it all. We're proud to be among the highest-rated local garage door companies in all of Northwest Arkansas. Our highly trained technicians are available 24 hours a day at no extra cost to you. So if you have an emergency, call us today, 479-203-5880, or visit our website at directservicenwa.com. Don't wait days. We'll fix it now. All right, welcome everybody. Pre-game show. I'm Ty Hudson. Let's get this thing started off right. Let's get the banner going down below. There we go. It's up. It's up and running. Let's make sure we get the likes and the shares and the subscribing done. All right. We got those three things checked off. Let's do this. Three, two, one. Yo, hog fans. How you doing? How's it going? Hope you guys uh, enjoyed last night. I was way off. I really thought I really thought Louisville would uh <laughs> I thought they were going to give Arkansas a better challenge. And uh they didn't do that and they also didn't do that today against Texas Tech. They they lost pretty badly. Pretty rough pretty rough go of it for Louisville so far here in Maui here in Maui as if I were there. <laughs> Yeah, right. Woo pig, baby. That's that's what's up, Scott Swindle. That's what's up. Cameron Gray, let's go. Mr. Haas gives us drops the yo. Ready for this big top 10 matchup tonight, boy. That's what I'm talking about, man. This is a great, great matchup. Good challenge for Arkansas early on. This is exactly why you sign up for something like Maui. That's why you sign up for this. The opportunity to play against high-quality opponents. We thought Louisville might be better than their schedule suggested. Three games, they lost by a grand total of three points. They've got a couple of ballers on that roster. Unfortunately, well, I mean, you guys saw what happened. That was a that was a murder. That's what we witnessed last night live on, on television. That was an absolute murder. It was, it was destruction. Okay. Let's uh, let's make sure we get the shares across again. If you're on Facebook, Twitter, social media, whatever, make sure you get the shares out. Go to hogville.net for for all the for all the great content, whether it's football, basketball, baseball. Kevin Kevin McPherson will handle the post game, and he will also have something written up for you as well over on hogville.net again, free, 110. percent Otis Kirk, Dudley Dawson, they will uh, they've got you covered on on a little bit of everything. We will have our pregame show tomorrow. Tomorrow's going to be a busy day. We're going to have to figure out what the scheduling looks like for tomorrow because we know there's going to be, a, you know, a lot of stuff going on. But we will have a preview show. It may, it won't. I'm not sure. Again, I, I don't quote me on a time just yet. We'll get, we'll try to keep you guys up to date on Twitter and uh, wherever we can as well. So I know you guys have kind of looked forward to that 11 a.m. Thursday show, but it's uh, obviously. It's Turkey Day. It's Thanksgiving. So those plans are a little bit altered, if you will. And of course, Arkansas will kick off against Mizzou on Friday at 3, 3 p.m., right? 3 p.m. Pretty sure. Stun the like button. How about how about John Ridgeway suplex the like button? How about we do that? Howdy, Ty and all. Rob, hope you're doing well, sir. Ty, that evil laugh made me lol wait which one what <laughs> is that it <laughs> I, I that one is i have to force it like i've got to really feel it deep down let's talk about creighton for just a minute creighton the blue jays i, I get have fun with this name all day long creighton the blue jays are five and oh number 10 in the country last year they did make the tournament they made it to the second round in the Midwest region, they got knocked out 79-72. They were a pretty good team last year. Not great, but pretty good. Um, Cal Brenner, Cal Brenner, I should say. He's one of their returning starters. He's someone they're going to have to keep an eye on tonight. Right now, this year, he's another one of those guys. You talk about the capability of, 
of of finding his way into a double double. He's the kind of guy that could do it. Fifteen points, almost seven rebounds a game, shooting around seventy eight percent field goal percentage. I mean, Ryan uh, Kalkbrenner, he's a center. He can do a little bit of damage. He can be a problem. Seven one two sixty. Now, I think he may. We'll see. I think I think he was the one that rolled his ankle, if I'm not mistaken. He might be dinged up. I don't know. I have not. I don't know what the update is on that, to be completely honest with you. Uh, 230, I believe. Was it 230 kickoff? I thought it was three. Happy Thanksgiving, man. Hey, Todd, appreciate that. H- Happy Thanksgiving to you, sir. I appreciate that. Um, yeah. Greg McDermott, you guys are asking who their head coach is. Who is their head coach? Well, Todd, it's Greg McDermott. He's he's in his 13th year with these guys, with the Blue Jays. Off to a really good start. Again, these guys, 5-0, and oh, pretty solid. Uh, when you look at them, when you look at the matchup across the across the board, they're right. This is this is heavy offense versus heavy defense. That's what this is. Um, offensive efficiency, top twenty in the country. Turnover margin or turnover percentage. They're they're about thirteenth in the country. We know Arkansas has struggled here. Not really a surprise when you watch them in Europe, right? That has, I, I would I would argue they've cleaned it up for the most part. Arkansas has. But um, still not pretty. 229 right now is where they rank. It's, it's early in the year. We'll see as the, as the year moves on. We'll see if Arkansas can kind of push away from some of that. Uh, offensive rebounding, they're pretty damn good. I mean, when you're hovering around the top 50, you're, you're, not, you're not bad at it, right? You got to remember, there's a lot of schools that play at this level. And to be in the top 50, top 60, it's not too bad, right? They're not elite at it just yet, but it's still very early in the year. Arkansas ranks um, they're, they're 187 in offensive rebound percentage. They're okay at shooting outside. They're they're about uh, 36 percent, 30 about 36 and a half percent. That's good enough for 90th in the country. They have struggled like Arkansas at the free throw line. A little bit better than Arkansas. They're 68 percent there. Arkansas 66.7 percent. Uh, they're tw- they're number 222. In the country, there Arkansas's 240. Got to clean that up. I mean, anyone who's 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 listened to me long enough to do these post game shows, like Arkansas, kind of has a tendency to get off to a slow start here, right? When you're when you're talking about free throw shooting, get off to a slow start. Something I would love to see happen tonight that we got a glimpse of is is the outside shooting for the Razorbacks. Um. I, I don't know how many times this year we're going to see the Hogs shoot as well, right, as they did outside. Now, we could have credit to some of this, just Louisville not being a very good team. I kind of thought their perimeter thought their perimeter defense was sometimes aggressive, but not as great as it probably could have been. Arkansas ended up shooting about 36% outside. That's not, that's not bad. Eight out of 22. They knocked down eight three-point shots last night. I would love to see that happen. These guys, the Blue Jays, can make it happen outside as well. Um, they can, they can make it happen outside as well, but Arkansas in this game against Louisville, who's now 0 and five, not the kind of start. I think anybody would have guessed for, for Louisville, Arkansas also shot. What is this? A season high, like 74%, 14 of 19 at the free throw line. If it's not season high, it's close. But again, 36% on 22 attempts. That's not, that's not atrocious. 57%, 57%, but we know why. How many dunks did they have last night? I think I think I counted, I think it was, was it 10, 11 dunks? It was crazy. It was nuts. High percentage shots, baby, up and around the rim. That's going to be Arkansas's game this year is finding ways to get to the rim. If they could stretch the floor out a little bit, knock down some, some open looks outside, then so be it. You know, but you don't need them. They don't really need to. They're so athletic. They're so long and they're deep on the bench i mean you feel like again this is i don't know if this is a a huge challenge or if it just makes things actually easier for muscleman i don't i don't know when you look at (laughs) when you look at what at just how deep and the options they have coming off the bench it's just astounding makai mitchell last night got 20 minutes 
He ended up with six rebounds, three assists, two steals, 12 points, only two fouls, zero turnovers. You think he's playing his way into that rotation? I the more I watch these guys, the more I think they're gonna have to they're gonna have to live with about a nine man rotation. Like I, I you, you're gonna have to keep some of these guys happy, and there's just so much damn talent up and down the roster. You got to keep these guys all happy. You, you got to feed them. Uh, Brazil only had 15 minutes, one point. Now this is what's astounding to me: Brazil, who's been the man. Ricky Council, who's been the man. Neither one of those guys were your leading score producers. It was it was Anthony Black with 26 points. Yeah, he had four turnovers. You don't want that from your one spot. You don't want that from your point guard. You don't want him turning the ball over that much. But he had the he had the basketball in his hands quite a bit. Played 35 minutes. You know, he was five of five at the line. Even grabbed three rebounds, had six assists. We did a poll on our uh, Discord. I think two people got it right. I don't know how many people picked, but we asked who was going to win the game because it was kind of, it, to me, it kind of felt like this is going to be a challenge. I still felt pretty comfortable. I felt really comfortable Arkansas was going to win. Just didn't imagine it'd be by this amount, 80 to 54. But then how many assists was Anthony Black going to get? We had two people. I, I think we ended up with over 20-something votes. Two people picked six assists. We had a couple that went above. Most went under. He ended up with six assists. Again, three rebounds, one offensive rebound. Six offensive rebounds on the night. Arkansas out rebounds Louisville just by four, 28 to 24 rebounds. Um looking at looking at Texas Tech and, and what the Blue Jays did. Uh they held uh they held Batcho to seven, 17 points. Three of their no four of their starting five ended up in double digits for Texas Tech, but all five of the Blue Jays starters last night had double digit points. God, you got to love that. And they're not as deep as Arkansas in terms of talent. They're not. Uh, they 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 don't have five other guys that can come off that bench and have the high expectations that the players coming off the bench for Arkansas have. They just don't. They've got fantastic. I think their seven man rotation is going to be pretty stout. It's going to be pretty stout. Farabello, a guy who ended up with fifteen points last night, had a pretty or yesterday. I shouldn't say last night. Yesterday. Had kind of a rough go of it. Um, 0 of 3 overall, 0 of 3 outside shooting. Had one assist, no points, and a foul. But he's someone I think they're a younger guy. They're kind of expecting to have, you know, they have they have high expectations for him. I believe. I mean, clearly, you're talking about a freshman coming off their bench getting 15 minutes. But their starting five all got 30 minutes or more. Uh, Kalum ended up with 34 minutes. He again leading score. He had a pretty good night. Four rebounds, a, a steal, two blocks, four turnovers, just one foul, 18 points. Uh, Nimbard is had 16 points. They're not coming in tonight 100% fully healthy. They've had some bumps and bruises, but uh, this is going to be a good game. This, this is truly, and I know I said this about Louisville. I thought I thought Louisville was going to be a better matchup. I really did. I thought that game was going to be so much better than it went. And it was uh, kind of brutal for, for Louisville. It was fantastic if you're a Hog fan. I know at one point, Cameron Gray says there was four to five dunks in two-ish minutes. It's, it's insane. That dunk by Black, that dunk by him where he just kind of drives to the, to the right inside the paint. It's like no one – and it was weird too because – it was either their center or one of their forwards kind of backed off. They must, I think they were in man. I think they're in man defense at that point because he peels off to go underneath and Black just attacks the rim and with an easy dunk. See how high above they are ab above the rim. It's kind of insane. The Mitchell Twins are pretty incredible. I wonder if Musk uh, counts them as one man in his usual seven eight man rotation. <laughs> I mean, right. The depth of this team is what's going to matter down the stretch. Yeah, a lot of depth. Again, a lot of talent, length. And we've said this about previous about previous teams before, the athleticism on the floor, but this is a level of athleticism. I mean, we talked about it in preseason basketball. Uh, we talked about it over the summer. We've talked about it here on Hogville, over on Tusk Talk. This is going to be the best talent-wise probably the best team that's ever been on the floor for Arkansas. That is the ceiling for this team. Now, 
living up to those expectations, man. I mean, ultimately, when you say that, it's like, oh, well, okay, 94-95, back-to-back Final Four appearances, back-to-back national title appearance. You win one, you lose the other, right? Is that the expectations we're hearing here, Ty? I'm not saying that you should you should plan your trip just yet, but I, I, they are the, the ceiling, I believe. This is coming from me, not on behalf of all of Hogville, just me. I think the ceiling is Final Four. And, and in fact, I think it's championship game caliber. Uh, uh, th- that's where the ceiling is. That's where the caliber of talent is. It's just absurd how good they are. And they really stretch. Now, they're. I think they are going to have some growing pains, and maybe it starts tonight. Because once again, here we are. We said this yesterday against Louisville. Well, here's a quality opponent. Here's your best opponent. Well, now here's your best opponent. You're talking about a number 10 ranked Blue Jay basketball team taking the floor tonight. Makes you wonder what the Texas, what Texas was all about. Yeah, it really does. Exhibition, sure. Sure. Exhibition game. I, I, you know, it is hard to take that game really serious simply because of that reason. Because it was an exhibition game. Um, but yeah, the game is going to be on ESPN. For those of you asking, says ESPN, according to Arkansas Razorbacks, uh, their schedule on their website. Elvin Gully says it's like the Duke game was Muss's. You, you better go get. Oh, oh, I know, I know that reference. That's uh that's a call back to Nolan Richardson in the early nineties. I remember that. I mean, I I'm too young to I mean, obviously I didn't understand what it meant at the time, but I know what you're talking about. That's a that's a good point. Better go get you some men. I think that is exactly what has happened. I think Arkansas went and found themselves some men. And they're again, the the athleticism, uh, <laughs> the reach, the arm length, right? I mean, these guys are just there's such a problem. And, you know, I said this last year too, like Arkansas is less reliant on matchups a year ago, I felt like. I feel even more so this year, not only because of arm length, but just simply because of the speed that you have on the floor. And I think we haven't even seen Nick Smith Jr. yet. We haven't even seen the best basketball prospect out of high school this last year yet. I mean, this is absurd. Yeah, uh, to me, the ceiling is Final Four. It is. Beyond that, I don't know. It's it's like at that point, it's just who's hot, who's in better rhythm, what's the chemistry like on the floor. Listen, this team is going to have growing pains. Absolutely. They're going to lose some games where you're just like, what did we just watch? It's going to happen, especially with all the newcomers and the freshmen. Last night, and I hope we continue to see more of this, but I love – that Ricky Council's not your leading scorer. And Brazil did affect the game, just not on the on the stat sheet. And yet you had two other guys really step it up in one way or another. Devo defensively last night, that was one of the best performances he's had in his career. And that's saying a lot because that guy's had a fantastic career as a defender. Uh, no matter what, you know, whatever his role is, he's he was fantastic last year. Uh, and that's why people wonder when he when he struggled to score, when he struggled to find himself offensively last year uh, during the regular season, the common question in my live chats were, why is he seeing so much playing time? And I had to keep telling you guys, it's because of his defense. It's because of what he could do out on the perimeter. He could shut folks down. And something we're seeing a lot less of so far, I think, early on this year compared to last year, less open looks. Now, these guys, the Blue Jays, are pretty good at creating their own looks outside on the perimeter. They're pretty good at doing that. They can knock down the three ball. Defense is going to be huge. Again, this is this is offense versus defense tonight. The Blue Jays are the offense. Arkansas is the defense. That's what this boils down to. We could talk about all the players on the floor, but at the end of the day, it's going to be who has come to sh- – who's, who's showing up ready to play this game, ready to put on their best performance of the night. That You're talking about two top ten teams, two teams that are talked about as final four possibilities. Right, that's what you're. That's what's going on tonight. This is the. This is a great game, interesting matchup. We'll see what happens on the floor. I. I really. I'm. I don't even want to pick a winner to be completely honest. I did pick Arkansas, I believe, in our Discord. In Tusk Talk with Tide Discord, but uh, don't quote me on that. I, I, either I picked Arkansas or I haven't picked yet. But this is going to be a hell of a game. This is going to be an interesting matchup. Um, 
Nick Smith Jr. was on the bench. Very excited. Yeah. Would love to see him get some minutes. But you know what? If you're keeping him for, I don't know, your first big test at home, I, I don't, I sure. I mean, if, I don't know. If he's good to go tonight, I would love to see him play, but I, I just don't think we will. Then again, I thought Louisville would give Arkansas a game, and I was wrong about that. And we thought there was a possibility that Nick that Nick could play, and he didn't. Uh, feels so nice to have to not have to rush Nick. Oh, that's a great point right here out of Stephen thirteen eighty three. Very good point. Yeah, you don't feel like they have to rush to get him on the floor. Now, I would again. I'm going to stress that so far, does Arkansas have a quality win? It's very similar to the football conversation. We had this conversation during the football season. You know, does Arkansas have, of course, we were making that comment later in the year. It's way too early to know one way or another. Who knows? Some of those teams you played early on got off to a rough start and they figure it out as the year goes on. And all of a sudden they're staring down the, they're looking at, they're looking at a 22, 23 win season. All of a sudden they figured it out. They find their way in. Maybe they have a good conference tournament and they find their way into the, into the NCAA tournament. You never know. You know, Arkansas has looked really good, really, really good, blowing opponents out. Is tonight going to be like a brick wall scenario where they run into a brick wall, or is it just going to be more of what we've seen these last several games? I'm loving this matchup tonight. The more the more you look at this, the more it's just, who really knows? Uh, uh, is Arkansas a Final Four team? Again, I think they're ceiling. I want to be perfectly clear. I'm saying they're ceiling. When I think everything's put together, when they have the chemistry, when they have the rotation figured out, that could take until January. Who knows? Under Muss, it could take till conference play and even a few games after, right? Once you get, but I feel like once everything meshes together and they find the chemistry, they find the right rotation, they get the guys in the right position and, you know, fighting their role within this, whatever it is they're asked to do, whatever it is that Muss wants them to do. And they're all bought in, which I think they are. They look bought into me. Uh, especially with with the ease of which they're they're winning these games, I think their ceiling is Final Four. Are they right now a Final Four team? I don't know. It's going to be about how they respond when they do get punched in the mouth. They're going to listen. It's hard to go undefeated in college basketball. It doesn't happen very often. It's hard to just be a one two loss team, right? Uh, it's hard to just to to just put on a great performance night after night and to have a, a good product on the floor. Consistency can be a, a struggle to find. Musselman has found a way to do that. He's found a way getting into February. All of a sudden, his teams are playing some fantastic ball, and they make great runs in the NCAA tournament, back-to-back -to -back Elite Eights. But if they find all this stuff and figure it out, I'll get, pack, I'll get back to you on whether or not I think they really are a Final Four team. Again, I think their ceiling is Final Four. I think the talent, the coaching – Everything is there. It's in the pot. Must is stirring the pot. We'll just see what comes out uh, when he's done cooking, right? I feel like it ought to just be fantastic. And again, Nick Smith comes in. That's going to change some things. That's going to change the dynamics. Obviously, it's going to change the rotation. You might get a couple guys that get comfortable in their current rotation and what their role is that must has them playing. And then all of a sudden, here comes Nick Smith. It's going to change some stuff up, and it might, it might. I don't know. Might rub some guys the wrong ways. Uh, Creighton is no joke. The Hogs will have their hands full. And I agree with that. I, I, I think they're going to be – I believe this is going to be a tough matchup. I know I'm 0 for 1 right now on Louisville. I thought Louisville would be a better matchup, and I don't know. But I agree. 80s rocker. 80s rock. I have mixed opinions on 80s rock, by the way. Mixed opinions. Some good rock, but the but the big hair bands, I'm over it. Metallica came out of the 80s. Ozzy Osbourne's solo career came out of the 80s. <laughs> uh, how Arkansas defense shut out Creighton tonight. Yeah, I think they're going to have to guard well out on the defend or out in the uh, – they're going to have to defend well out on the perimeter. Can't give any open looks. Clog up the lanes as best you can. Force them every single shot needs to be contested. But these guys are pretty good at finding their low. They're, they're pretty good at creating their own shots. Uh, they'll find a way. And, again, this is heavy offense. 
The Blue Jays are right now heavy, heavy offense. I mean, they shot 55% against Texas Tech. Not a bad basketball team, by the way, the Red Raiders. Not bad at all. Uh, they were 9 of 20 outside. They, they knocked down nine threes last night or yesterday. 13 and 17 at the free throw line now. Again, like I mentioned about Arkansas earlier, uh, they've overall most of the year kind of struggled at the free throw line. They're a sub 60, what, 68% team at the free throw line. 55% field goal percentage is kind of nuts. That's kind of crazy. 27 to 49 is pretty damn good. 9 to 20 outside is pretty damn good. You're going to take nine threes any given night, man. You can live with that. Seven offensive rebounds. They out rebounded AM, or excuse me, AM. Texas, I've got AM on the brain. Texas Tech, they out rebounded those guys 33 28. Didn't get a lot of bench production. I talked about that earlier. That's something they're going to, they're going to need to, you know, they're going to have to dig deep against Arkansas. And I think ultimately that's where this game could be won for Arkansas, beating them out as the game goes on and, and they start to wear these guys down like they've done every opponent this year, especially Louisville. Louisville was done. Louisville was done. 13 minutes to go in the second half. They were done. They looked tired, worn down. You know, when you don't have the quality depth, what does what is quality depth? What what does it do? It matters. That's what it does. Quality depth matters. And when you don't have it, against teams like Arkansas, you're in for a really long night. And tonight, the Blue Jays are going to get really tested on their bench. And I think that's ultimately where Arkansas can find a way, wear these guys down, get aggressive, play above the rim. Shot selection, at first, I thought yesterday was a little, little. I don't know, I thought some guys were taking shots. Uh, they just they saw the look and they took it. And that's kind of Muss's philosophy. He'd rather a bad shot or, or any shot over a turnover. I get it. But I don't know. I, I Sometimes it's like, just feed them low. Force force uh, force things down in the paint, drive to the rim, live above the rim. That's kind of their that's who they are. That's gonna be their identity. They're they're gonna just like similar to last year. We know they haven't been great outside shooting. They were horrible outside shooting against uh over in Europe. Now, can they turn that around? Maybe. Maybe, of course. I mean, but I'm really excited, man. Anthony Black, again, that's another cat. You're talking about your point guard getting that kind of production, man. I'm all about it. Quality death matters, Ty. Still waiting on that to be a shirt. Texas Tech put a beating on Louisville today. They sure did. Um, I don't know. Someone suggested maybe Arkansas broke their spirit. I just think Louisville's just not a good basketball team. Uh, come on, Ty. You look like you enjoyed uh winger and white snake <laughs> oh man you know what though ario speedwagon my dad my dad used to have his greatest hits cassette tape i remember listening to that ozzy osbourne when he went solo in the 80s metallica who else started in the 80s there's there's several there's some good there's some good you know there's some music I like out of the 80s, not so much on the rock side of things. <laughs> uh, Creighton's offense is elite, and their depth uh, on the bench is underrated. Hogs got a tough one tonight. Yeah, I, I don't know. You might know more about their bench play than I do. It's um, kind of – I've not. I wasn't really blown away by their performance yesterday, not saying they can't do it, not saying that they don't have some guys that could come off the bench and, and do some things. But they're about to get tested. Like, this is going to be their first test. And if you look at their schedule, and again, you could say the same, the exact same thing about Arkansas. They played St. Thomas, North Dakota, Holy Cross, and UC Riverside. And then they played Texas Tech, a game they won 76-65. to 65. And they beat the crap out of all these teams. St. Thomas they beat by 12, 72-60. North Dakota they creamed, 96-61. Holy Cross they beat 94-65. Uh, UC Riverside 80 51, and then they scored 76 on Texas Tech, holding them to 65 points. So, you guys do me a favor before we uh end things here. Tell me your predictions. Tell me your predictions. Give me your scores really quick. You're more of a backstreet boy, uh, backstreet boys guy, aren't you? No, I am not. No, not a fan. I'm not a fan. Listen, you keep your glitter and your puffy long blonde hair with your with your with your giant purple star 
on your face. You keep all that. You can keep that. I, I want no part of that. <laughs> all I can say is thank God for bands like the Ramones. Didn't come out of the 80s, but still. Their music was still better than anything that came out of the 80s for the most part. <laughs> Hogs win 70 to 61, says Eric Fountain. Uh 74 72. Austin thinks it's gonna be a ball game. 72 66. Woo pick. This one might be a nail biter, says Todd Todd uh, Cooper. Yeah, it could be. Think our uh defense lead. Let's see. I think our defense leads to offense tonight. Yeah, transition basketball is gonna be it's gonna play a major role for Arkansas tonight. I agree. You mad, bro? No, this is banter, my friend. You might be new here. This is called banter. We have fun here. I don't. It takes a lot to crawl under my skin, and believe me, you're not even on the you're not even on the radar, my friend. Uh, the Texas exhibition game, the Texas exhibition game, will come in handy tonight. Hey, this is a good take. Sticks was a good band. Listen, man, Sticks was a good band. That is that is true. I'm not saying there hasn't been some good music coming out of the '80s. I just couldn't. Like White Snake, not my not my thing. <laughs> I'm gonna make some boomers mad tonight. I better stop with my eight. Hey, Aha, take on me was great. I know that's not '80s rock. Take on me, take on me. Uh, '80s rock set the path for early 2000s emo rock. Duran Duran had quite the uh, impact on. You're not wrong. There's some bands out of the eighties that had an impact on the, on the late nineties, mid late nineties bands. Uh, I see Ty more of a country. No, I do not. I'm not a fan of country at all. Johnny cash. I like some Willie Nelson, uh, Hank jr. A little, but no, I'm not a big country guy. No, no, I I'm, I'm more of a mid nineties, nineties rock metal. I like all kinds of music, hip hop. I like rap, man. I'm from Fayetteville. Like, Rap was huge in Fayetteville. I mean, it was huge everywhere, but um, Hogs need to shoot is, is yeah, no, 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 I, I agree with this. Arkansas needs to, yeah, I, I, would, I would love for them to shoot 56%. <laughs> and they very well could, although you kind of wonder, we're sitting here talking about how great these guys are, are at offense, but you know how this goes often. It ends up becoming, uh, it could become a defensive fest where these teams are both just playing great defense or it could be a high-scoring game. It really does feel like one of those matchups where anything could happen. But I do like I, – I don't want to pick anybody. I'll just say I'm leaning – I'm leaning to Arkansas winning this game tonight, but what a matchup it's going to be. Uh, Kevin, we'll have you guys on the post-game show. I appreciate you guys stopping by. Make sure you like, share, subscribe. Go to hogville.net for all the latest content, 100% free. And, yeah. All right. We'll see you guys. I'll be back tomorrow. And, again, I'll, I'll try to keep you guys posted – on uh, on when Otis Kirk and I go live tomorrow to preview Missouri. So stand by for that. We'll talk to you guys later.